People have forgotten about Jinx. She is an AD carry with a rather simple kit and only really works with crit items. Those meta trends of Umbra Glaive AD carries or mage bot laners simply don't suit her. However, Jinx just doesn't care about the meta, as her unique combination of high range and enormous teamfight potential is always valuable in a solo queue environment, no matter which other champions might be popular at the time. Living proof of this are summoners like Death Sequence. As a result of her meta-defying qualities, Jinx is an incredibly consistent champion to one trick. This summoner, for example, plays literally nothing else, but by making perfect use of Jinx's strengths, they are able to still consistently carry in Master Plus lobbies. And what works in high elo, of course, always works in lower elo as well. So no matter your current rank, Jinx is a champion worth picking up if you want to climb. The runes and items are very simple and always the same, allowing you to instead fully focus on the actual game once you understand the concept behind them. The full rune page is Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline and Coup de Grasse, with Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm secondary. Lethal Tempo is very strong in the late game, and Jinx, being a late game hyper carry, has perfect synergy with this rune. She excels in longer teamfights due to her passive, and with her Q, stacking Lethal Tempo is super easy. The minigun form allows you to stack it as fast as possible, while the rocket form allows you to keep stacking even if the enemy tries to walk out of range. A very typical situation would be to gun down your first target in rocket form, stacking lethal tempo from a safe range, and once they fall, you run towards the other enemies with your passive and keep going with lethal tempo's bonus range. Rocket form auto attacks are really at the core of Jinx's playstyle as they enable all of these strategies, so presence of mind is a must have for this champion. Especially once you get some attack speed, your rockets cost a lot of mana in teamfights, but when your passive triggers, presence of mind will trigger as well, so you will have enough mana to keep going in rocket form if you have to. Staying true to her late game hyper carry nature, Jinx also wants a late game rune in the next row. Legend Bloodline does take a while to stack, but it does add a lot of safety in the late game, while at the same time allowing you to get more aggressive items. As you will see in just a second, Jinx does not buy any lifesteal early and instead focuses on damage. Coup de Grasse is your vanilla choice in the next row. Jinx has relatively high base HP, making cutdown a little awkward, and Last Stand is only really useful for champions who are in the middle of the fight, like Samira for example. Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm are huge sources of attack damage for the late game, further boosting your power where it matters most. Your crits are going to be absolutely monstrous with this setup, and this champion has to be able to run over the enemy team in the late game no matter what, so this power boost is much needed. Now the item build is just as streamlined. You go for Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Greaves, Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, a Last Whisper item, and Bloodthirster in this exact order. Kraken Slayer is a crucial core item for Jinx. By attacking the same target over and over, you of course stack your lethal tempo, but Kraken Slayer ensures that target actually dies eventually. The faster Jinx can trigger her passive steroid, the faster she can clean up the fight. In a similar fashion, you buy Infinity Edge and Phantom Dancer to maximize your auto attacks. There simply is no better mythic item for the strategy than Infinity Edge, but Phantom Dancer is actually quite interesting. Some people go for a Rapid Fire Cannon or Runan's Hurricane even, but in most games Phantom Dancer will be the most consistent. Not only does this item also reward repeated auto attacks over a longer time, but the added movement speed in combat is crucial for sticking to your target. Should the enemy get out of range, you can no longer stack your keystone and you cannot keep going. As a result, Phantom Dancer's movement speed adds much needed consistency to Jinx's playstyle. Now of course a Last Whisper item is always needed in any AD carry build, because champion levels increase base armor by quite a bit, and in most games Lord Dominic's regards will be the best choice for Jinx. However, there are of course situations in which the enemy relies heavily on healing and your team does not quite yet have enough healing reduction, so more to reminder can be necessary there. Bloodthirster is the perfect mix of safety and damage for the last item slot, but if you keep getting one shot from out of vision by a Rengar or a Kha'Zix for example, Guardian Angel can also be an alternative. Okay, let's now look at the consistent strategy that allows Jinx mains to carry their teams to victory. Jinx's early game is generally speaking not very strong and she frequently gets bullied as a result. However, that is actually not a big problem because you will always have a secure late game. Your job in the early game is to not lose lane, whereas other champions have the burden of trying to win lane. Jinx can just chill and play for her power spikes instead. Jinx's biggest power spike by the way is her level 9, because level 9 fixes her biggest weakness, her short range. 
Jinx has below average auto attack range, yet her range with her rocket form scales with levels in the ability. It's a huge power spike, but you need to be patient, you need to wait. This early Jarvan gank is unlikely to lead to anything, especially since they're fighting in the enemy minion wave. It costs them summoners, that's pretty much all. Yeah, you need to be aware of your power spikes and keep your head low when you're still weak. And the following repeat gank serves as a perfect example. Here we get a good engage on Soraka, trying to chain CC with Jinx's Chompers, which is generally speaking a strong move. But, I mean, they get their summoner spell and Jarvan continues with the gank. However, the enemy bot lane is so much stronger than Jinx right now. Even with a stacked lethal tempo, she is barely not able to kill Kai'Sa, and Kai'Sa gets a double kill as a result. I mean, the play looked promising, but mistakes like that will happen if you don't play around your power spikes properly. However, I would argue that it was still a smart move of this Jinx one trick to follow up on Jarvan's gank, because if you don't, you just tilt your jungler and then you just lose the mental game. If your team decides the game's not worth playing anymore, you ought to lose, so that's the number one thing to avoid. And the lane phase is still okay for Jinx. She also got a kill and some gold for her items, so all she needs to do is sit back and farm, which is super easy once you get some components, and you can be proactive and make plays later on. Take note how this Jinx one trick is not afraid to literally sit under tower doing nothing, waiting for the minions to come, just to ensure that he doesn't mess up and feed away his late game potential. However, that doesn't mean you should never punish enemy positioning mistakes. Here Kai'Sa walks out way too far, essentially leaving herself 1v2 against Nami and Jinx. Of course Soraka behind her can heal her back up, which makes these trades a little bit more iffy than they should be. However, Jinx is able to deal good damage to Kai'Sa regardless, despite Kai'Sa trying to outplay with her ultimate. This fight ultimately though won't lead to much, except for trading some summoner spells and some damage, but you need to keep the enemy on their toes, you can't give them stuff for free. The general gist of all of this is, even though you're max strength at level 9, you can do stuff earlier. In this situation Jinx has already 4 points in Q and her finished Kraken Slayer, which gives her a lot of range and a lot of damage at the same time. Especially once she triggers her passive, she can clean up this mid-game skirmish no matter what. This lane phase ends by the way with Jinx losing her first tower, which should be expected, it is very common that this will happen because of the early game power imbalance. However, you are coming live slowly but surely. It doesn't matter if you lose your first tower, as long as you don't int, you can still do a lot of work in teamfights. And yeah, picking up a quick shutdown like this when the enemy greets is nice, but it's not required. All you need is your level 9 power spike to carry teamfights going forward. And the general game state definitely makes up for whatever shutdown money Jinx got there. Bot lane tower fell as I've said, but also mid lane is in a lot of trouble. Orianna outright gets dived here, with Aurelia claiming that most important tower immediately after as well. And the state of top lane is actually even worse. Our Jinx one trick will have to do some heavy lifting in this game. But the good news is, I mean, when Garen takes an early inhibitor, at least Jinx can now start farming super minions, which is a nice source of gold, they're as valuable as cannon minions after all. However, the only way to stop this Garen split push is if you press the subscribe button right now. Go ahead, press that subscribe. Now for real, when you're an immobile squishy AD carry, your only move in a situation like this is stay away from the fed enemies as much as possible. If they jump on you, you die. You have to stay hidden, don't walk into enemy vision and take whatever farm you can get to keep scaling. And unironically, super minions are a good source of income regardless. Of course, Baron isn't even greater source of income, but it is what it is, right? Anyway, your game plan is still the same. You want to stay at max auto attack range in rocket form and play around your passive. It is extremely common for enemy bruisers to try and dive the backline, especially when there is a squishy immobile AD carry, but Jinx with her range can actually avoid the initial engage. Irelia heavily overcommits and Jinx is able to punish with her damage from Kraken Slayer plus Infinity Edge. With the passive movement speed she can quickly join the rest of the fight and keep applying damage in rocket form. The enemy has no chance to trade back because Kai'Sa's range is much more limited, so they have to disengage. Of course you are relying on the enemy to make mistakes in a situation like this, but I mean that's the name of the game. If they were playing perfectly when they have a massive lead, you would just lose. However, League always has a human component. People make mistakes, people get greedy and people get impatient. You need to punish that. But while your range is big, you are by no means invincible. Aurelia gets a crucial flash engage onto Jinx in this fight here, and there's nothing you can do about this. I mean, you can only do so much. If you stay at max range to auto attack, you're useful, but you're risking the enemy flash engage. 
If you don't stay at max range and auto attack, you don't deal any damage and there's that, so some risks you will have to take and sometimes it does go wrong. Red team cannot finish as a result, luckily, but they're still tearing down blue team's base. However, Jinx has a 3 item combo of Kraken Slayer, Infinity Edge and Phantom Dancer by now, which makes her one of the most deadliest punishing AD carries in the game. Not even Garen was able to run away from this one, so blue team can now take Baron, get the objective bounty and some much needed breathing room. Baron will buy them time to fend off the super minions, allowing the inhibitors to respawn and blue team to regroup. Oh and about the move Aurelia tries to pull again, look how Jinx uses her chompers as a disengage tool. By placing chompers on herself, she can trap Aurelia when she tries to jump on her, and then she can use her flash this time to counter Aurelia's engage completely. Beautifully played, exactly how you need to do it with an immobile AD carry. But as I've said, blue team need to use their Baron buff defensively. They need to wait until the inhibitors respawn, use Baron to prevent the enemy from just split pushing and clear super minions. Yet Trindamere sets up a trap here, finds the engage on the enemy Soraka, to which red team try to help, but Jinx is always ready to follow up. The combination of long range and high damage this champion provides is just invaluable for solo queue. Not only are the follow-ups safe and consistent, but they're also very impactful. Now while Orianna stops Garen's relentless split push with her teleport, Jinx and her team can actually take some towers themselves now, but Lilia gets caught in the vortex. The damage is so incredibly high with such long range, and in combination with the Nami slow and the speed up from Phantom Dancer, there is no escape. The teams are relatively even in terms of gold now, but a full power Jinx is just unstoppable. The Dragon Steel was of course cherry on top, but the real MVP is this wall. Being able to attack over it with massive range while staying safe at the same time, the enemy has little time to respond to your damage and they will most likely just perish. If you want to learn more about optimal bot lane strategies, just click the link on your screen right there.